Welcome back to Smoke Your Ribs. I'm Russ Jones. In today's video, I'm doing episode six of my sausage series. We're doing a red barn bologna. We're gonna get started right after this. So let me show you what we're gonna be making this bologna with. I've got some rump roast, which is a very lean meat. Over here to my left, I've got an eye around. I was actually wanting to do all of this with an eye around because it's very, very lean, but I couldn't find but one of them. Everything right now in 2020, it's just scarce and hard to find sometimes. So I'll be using all this rump roast and a little bit of this eye around to give me the weight that I need. I'm doing 12 and a half pounds of bologna, which is exactly half of what this seasoning will make. This is the Red Barn bologna seasoning from PS Seasoning. It will do 25 pounds. I'm doing 12.5 pounds, which is exactly half of that. And along with that is this maple cure that goes into this seasoning and into the meat. I'll be using half of that as well. Now, the way that I determine how much fat and how much meat is I already know I got 12 and a half pounds of meat. So I'm gonna take my calculator here. We're gonna take 12.5 pounds times 30% fat. I need 3.75 pounds of fat and I have already weighed this out. I've got it right here. Both of these combined is 3.75 pounds. Now the meat I need, I need to take my 12.5 pounds. I need to subtract my 3.75 pounds of fat. I need 8.75 pounds of lean meat. So I will be cutting this up and I'll put it in a container, zero the container out, and I'll actually weigh this until I get 8.75 pounds. And once I get all that done, we'll come back and we'll uh, put all this in my grinder and I'll show you how I'm gonna grind these separately and use you know different plates that I'm using. I'll bring you back here in a few minutes. Let me get all this cut up and I'll take you to the next step. All right, now as you can see, everything is ice cold. That is the one thing about grinding meat. You want everything ice cold. It's just come out of the freezer my blade come out of the freezer. This is my plate. Let's see what size. This is a 3 16 plate. And what I always do is take a little bit, any kind of lubricant, like a, uh, like a uh, vegetable oil spray, or this is duck fat. It's good enough, just something to where it makes initial contact with that blade. You got some lubricant there. Now, once we start running this fat through, it will also act as a lubricant. What I want to do is go ahead and get all my fat ground up first separately. Had a little bit of water in there, just rinsed it out. Grinder on. You don't want to force this fat because it will smear. You just want it to feed itself as that auger grabs it. Now you can see just a little bit of pork with that, and that's fine. It's very little. This is like 99.98% fat. All right, so we are at the end of it. What you want to do is take a little bit of this fat, then run it right back through, so it'll push out the small amount in there that hadn't been ground yet. And here it comes. All right, got all the fat ground up. Now it's time for the meat. And by the way, this meat was partially frozen when I was just cutting into it. I've already got some in the throat of it. It's pushing a little bit of that fat out that was right there on the sides. I've got most of it out. So we should have just good, plain, lean beef here coming out. By the way, I'm going through a 3 16 plate on this and I will be grinding twice. All right, I've got my seasonings ready. I've got this measured out. I've got my maple cure that's got the sodium nitrite. I've got it measured out. Both of those is half of the packages I showed you earlier. Now I've also got a binder. This is a non-fat dry milk. That's all that is. There's a couple of kind of binders they make, but this is a very popular one that's used a lot. And the good thing about it, you can find it anywhere. Walmart's got it. Any grocery store's got this. And uh, it measured out to be one cup is what I'm going with. But if you actually weigh this like I did, just a dry weight, it is four ounces. You can use four to six ounces. And what this does is create a water retention or moisture retention inside the bologna. 
And as you know, most bologna that you buy that slice in the store, most of it's wet, you know, real moist when you buy it. And that's what that's for. So we're going ahead and get the meat in the hopper right now. We're going to add our seasonings, our water, our everything. I'm going to show you that here in just a minute. All right, so let's load this hopper up with all the lean meat first. So I got my meat in here, and from there, we're going to incorporate all the fat. That's 3.75 pounds of fat. So I've got two cups of water right here. This is filtered water. This is my maple cure with the sodium nitrate. We're just gonna add that into there. Take us a whisk. Whisk that up real quick. I want to add in this dry seasoning. Now, sometimes I'll grind this seasoning into my second grind. Sometimes I don't. It just, it, you know, either way, it's going to get in there great. A lot of times I'm forced to do all this in one day, so I use a cure accelerator when I'm smoking the sausage, and this will be a smoked bologna or bologna. And uh, so I'm not using a cure accelerator, which means this is actually going to sit overnight. I have tomorrow off. Actually, I have the next two weeks off, so I've got plenty of time to wait on this. Here goes two cups of water with our maple cure in. This should be all of our ingredients. I've got the binder, I've got the seasoning, I've got the cure and the water. So we're just gonna turn this on and we're gonna let this go for about five minutes and then I'll, I'll have a few more things I wanna add in for another three minutes. Here we go. All right, so we've been going five minutes. We're getting a good protein extraction. I did add about another half a cup of water. Looked like it could use it. That's just something you gotta play by ear. What I've got here is a pepper jack, high temperature cheese, one pound of it going in. And you can judge that however much you want. You don't have to go a whole pound. You can go a half pound, whatever. I like cheese. Now I've also got some dried jalapeno flakes and they do really well on stuff like this. I'm gonna go in with four tablespoons. So this bologna is gonna have just a little bit of spice to it. And that is the beauty of doing this yourself. You can add really anything you want. My mom used to buy what they call an olive loaf back when I was a kid. And they were square slices, kind of like, you know, deli ham. I lost count, I think that's four. And, uh, but you would take whole olives, like stuffed with pimentos, put them in there and it bonds really well. When you slice it, you have your olive pieces inside of that, you know, on the side of the bologna and it gives it like really good particle definition with the cheese and I got little jalapeno bits. I almost did think about, you know, maybe using olives, but I'll do that some other time. So we want to go around another three minutes. We're going to turn this on, just let it go. All right, so I'm going to dig all this meat out of here. And so you know, there's the protein extraction. That's just about like what I have with the summer sausage I did here a while back. Can't even hardly get it off this, off my fingers there. So that looks really good. We're just gonna dig that out. We're gonna fill this as far as this will go. And uh, once we get enough in the bottom, we're gonna pack it down to make sure we get out any air that could create a problem in the cases. You don't wanna get air in your cases. You want good solid meat because it leaves holes in your in your sausage, in this case, bologna. And uh, you still might end up with some little small holes, but we're gonna do the best we can with it. All right, now what I've got here is uh, fibrous casings. I've got two types. This is what they call a clear. I've had them soaking in warm water for the last 30 minutes. When I got ready to stuff this and get all my equipment out here, that's when I started soaking these. So it's been right at 30 minutes. And we're gonna start with this first case in here first. What the warm water does is make it more pliable. This is a synthetic case and it's not edible. It's strictly there just to pack this and hold it good and round while you cook it to where it holds its shape. That comes off at the end. 
We're going to shove this over our horn. I've got the biggest horn that's available for this uh, particular meat stuffer. Now, while I'm on the subject of fibrous casings, I've had this question in a couple of my videos. Some people don't see how smoke can penetrate this casing. Trust me, smoke does penetrate. It was designed for smoking in mine. It's fibrous, you know, it's fibrous. It's also got little rows of pinholes that are more visible once you actually start stuffing it. But smoke definitely penetrates and it's just a perfect amount of smoke. So let me get my foot controller here set up. Put two hands on this. Let's start it out. Good and tight. I want to get it good and full. I'll be cutting this grinder, I mean this stuffer, on and off until I get what I'm looking for here. And the odds of, of having a blowout on this kind of casing isn't very good. It's really tough stuff. Now watch me have a blowout right after I said that. All right, I'm going to hold right there. Let's get this a little bit in. And the really good thing about these large cases is you can actually drop in meat right in the top. And you can take and get this extremely tight. Let's get this good and tight. All right, I want to take and lay this right over here on this clipper. Take our clipper. We got one on there. So let's go ahead and get a second one on there for good measure. It's going to be a lot of weight hanging in that smoker. There's our string right here that we'll hang them by. Yeah, that's a lot of weight. All right, so now what I'm going to use is another fibrous casing, but this one is a mahogany, mahogany color. And that's the only difference. They're basically the same thing. Now both of these, once I get them packed, will go in the fridge overnight. And uh, like I said, that'll get that cure to working. And also it'll help all those flavors meld and come together really good. And tomorrow morning, I'm firing up the smoker and I'll see y'all then. Well, it is the following day and it is a Monday. And uh, let me show you what I've got here. First off, let me show you how I've got the sausage hung up. All right, so there is our red barn bologna two chubs one a little taller than the other by about three or four inches if you notice on that back one the mahogany colored casing i have a probe that's running dead center it's full length i've got them hanging by the way i now have hanging rods and these rods are made by pro smoker the ones that made this smoker so if you happen to order this smoker, make sure you ask for the rods. I've got two of them, and that should do me pretty good for what I use. If not, I'll order one more. So I've got my drip pan in place. I don't have no smoke pan in yet, just the element, because we're getting ready to go through the drying cycle. All right, so we are ready to go through the drying process about one hour now. It has dried all night in the refrigerator, so one hour of this just rushing natural convection across it with uh, 125 degrees is going to warm it up somewhat, and that's going to get this early, early process started in our smoking process, which is probably going to be an all-day adventure. All right, let's set it. Actually, I said it earlier. Let's make sure it's still set at 125. We got it set at 125 degrees, 35 degrees internal. I've got a center probe, dead center of the bologna in the back. It's a little bit shorter. I went the whole distance of the probe, dead center. I'm reading 35, almost 36 degrees. Took it out of the refrigerator maybe 20, 25 minutes ago. And it is 56 degrees out here. Now in addition, just to help me out, I've got a timer here. I've got this set for one hour. I've just started this thing, so we're gonna go ahead and start it. And this is gonna count down. I'm also, this is starting the, the smoking process, so I'm doing a count up. I'm counting up. This will give me my total time from start to finish when all this is said and done. And this is gonna keep me in track from, uh, well, the first hour. Then I'll have it set for probably two to three hours on the second smoke and so on until we complete this bologna. So that's where I'm at. 
And uh, one hour from now, I'll bring you back and I'll show you how I'm going to bring the temperatures from 125 up to about 150. That means we've been going one hour. We're gonna stop this alarm. I've got three quarters of a pan deep. This is a hickory sawdust. I love hickory on this kind of stuff. So far I've used a hickory on the smoke sticks that I did, the snack sticks, the summer sausage. Now I'm gonna do it on bologna. I do have other sawdust in there, but I really like this, but it's completely saturated. You can see that water in there, completely saturated. That goes on our bottom burner. Now I have laid a separate pan in here for a couple of reasons. One reason, it's gonna be easier to clean up than this other pan. And I'm just gonna go in with cold water. I've got about two and a half quarts in this container here, and it looks like it's gonna take all of it. That should last a good long time. It would actually take a little bit more. All right, let's go ahead and close her up. I need to choke this one back to one quarter of the way open and the bottom vent one quarter of the way open. Now it will remain there for the remainder of this cook. One quarter open on the bottom, one quarter open on the top. All right, like any other thing, I'm doing incremental increases in temperature. We start at 125, now we're at 155 in two hours. When this timer goes, oh, I forgot to set that. Okay, when that goes off, I'm going to ramp it up to 165 for another two hours. And I'll bring you back at that point. All right, let's set our temperature now to 165. Set. set. All right, I've been going around 25 minutes since I set this up to 165 degrees. It didn't take like 10 minutes, so I'll, I will add 10 minutes at the end of this once it goes the full two hours. And uh, so, you know, I did insert another thermometer in the other the other bologna right here. And I'm reading real close. I'm at 106 on this one. It should turn here in a second. This one's at 107. So they're very close. All right, my alarm just went off. We've been going another two hours at 165. So I've turned this particular timer off. All I'm looking at now is counting up. We've been going a total of five hours and 31 minutes. And that's including the one hour the one hour that we use just drying it out at 125. This is total time, five hours and 31 minutes. Now what I want to do is go ahead and bring this up to 180 degrees. We're set. So we're set at 180. It will get there probably in about another 10 minutes. So we're just gonna let it ride out at 180 until I reach an internal temperature of 155, 156. At that point, I'm gonna verify my temperatures throughout it with an instant read. The next time you see me, these will be going into an ice bath right here for a quick cool down. All right, let's lay it in our ice bath. Start this cool down. So we're going to let this soak for about 20 minutes, maybe 30, just to make sure we get that internal temperature all the way down. Then from there, I might hang them back up in the smoker. It'll be cooled off by then. Get ready to get the steam pan out. And we're just going to let them sit here. It's nice and cool out here. It's like in the upper 40s. I'm going to let them bloom. Probably right here, just hang them back up, let them bloom for a couple hours. And then from there, they'll go in the fridge overnight. Since you have seen me last, I brought this bologna and the other chub indoors and I wrapped them both with a plastic wrap. Put them in the fridge, they've been there all night. It's actually the, in the afternoon the following day. Oh, this smells so good. It's got a really nice smoky flavor. We're just gonna unwrap this plastic wrap. Oh, it's nice and firm. Here goes nothing. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That is just beautiful. We got our cheese. You can see even the fat. You got some particle definition with the fat. There's your cheese. There's your bits of jalapeno. That's exactly what I was shooting for. This. 
Oh, it smells delicious. All right. All right, I'm gonna get my uh, meat slicer set up. We're gonna slice some of this. We're gonna give it a try. All right, let's take us a piece right here. Just look at that. Look at the particle definition. Now I've got 30% fat. You could probably go as low as 20%, 25%, but I love that. It gives it that real silky, smooth, creamy taste. All right, look at that. Look at the texture on it. That is just perfect. All right, now for the real result here. Mm. Great texture on this. By the way, I did remove that, that uh, casing off of there before I sliced it. Comes off very easy once you find it, just peel it off. This has an outstanding texture. That is just like store-bought bologna as far as texture goes. It's nice and moist. That's where that binder helped out. But in all honesty, it has more of a salami taste to me than it does bologna. It's so much better. This is better than any bologna I've ever had. It's all beef with the exception of the pork fat in there. 30% fat, as you can see, it has some fat in it. And uh, that's just pure flavor. This is fantastic. You could always cut back on the fat if you wanted to. You could go, uh, you know, an 80-20, but I would recommend at least 25% fat, but I wanted the full 30, and I'm glad I went that way. Bologna, like you get in a store, that is an emulsified sausage. Now, we did do emulsification, but not to the extreme they do. They end up with almost like a, a meat paste. I mean, this stuff is horrible. It, it's so emulsified. Ours wasn't near to that extent, but remarkably great texture on that. I mean, that is just fantastic. It's got the moisture on there that I mentioned earlier in the video. Great flavor. I do have a confession to make. Instead of using the Speed Cure, Speed Cure, which is sodium nitrite only, I use the Maple Cure. Now the recipe on PS Seasoning's website, as well as the packaging, calls to use just the Speed Cure. But I have used this Maple Cure in the past, and I highly recommend it if you make this Red Barn Bologna fantastic stuff. I'll have links in the description box for PS Seasonings. They have all kind of great seasonings for sausages and barbecue, you name it, they got it. They've also got the smoker that I use to make this, which I really love. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I'm getting ready to slice all this up. We're gonna vacuum pack it and maybe 10 slices per pack, something like that. I'll give some away. But I hope y'all enjoyed it. Until next time, smoke your ribs.